Okay, so this is just me uh, trying to read first aid um, out loud. Uh, what we have now is the pathology section, the severe adaptations. They are uh, reversible changes. They can go back to their natural state. Uh, so reversible changes that can be physiologic or pathologic. Uh, for physiologic, there's an example. It's uterine enlargement during pregnancy. Well, pathologic like myocardial hypertrophy, secondary to systemic hypertension. So if we have um, systemic hypertension, then the heart needs to get bigger in order to be able to pump. Um, if stress is excessive or persistent, if it's too much or lasting for too long, the adaptations can progress to cell injury, which may cause cell injury, like significant left ventricular hypertrophy leading to myocardial injury and then heart failure. Myocardial injury and then heart failure. So uh, we also have hypertrophy. It is increased structural proteins and organelles so there is an increase in the proteins and organelles so which both lead to an increase in the size of cell not the number is just the size of the cell that's hypertrophy so example like cardiac hypertrophy that's that's good so in the heart it's um uh cardiac hypertrophy because um, the heart is a permanent uh, the cells of the heart are permanent cells and they don't usually divide so they have to go uh, undergo hypertrophy because they cannot multiply this um, includes the cardiac myocytes the skeletal muscles and the nerves as well so uh, what we have as here is hyperplasia it is controlled okay, so that's the most important thing controlled proliferation of stem cells and differentiated cells, both the stem cells and the differentiated cells. So um, it is an increase in number, not sized, only the number of cells, okay? For example, the benign prostatic hyperplasia, which is by the name, it says benign, so it will not develop into a prostate cancer. It's just gonna stay as it is because it's benign. So, um, but, in, but in case of um, excessive stimulation, uh, that is for hyperplasia we're talking, um, there could be pathologic hyperplasia if that's the excessive stimulation. So the pathologic hyperplasia include endometrial hyperplasia as an example. So if you have endometrial um, hyperplasia, that's, that's a pathologic uh, hyperplasia. Uh, which may, that means it may progress to dysplasia and cancer. So it may or may not, but it may progress dysplasia and cancer. Okay, so that's hyperplasia. For atrophy, it's a decrease. Okay, so it's a decrease in tissue mass due to decrease in size. So it's a decrease in the mass due to decrease in the size. So in addition to the size, it is also a decrease and or a decrease in the number of cells, in the number of cells. So it's decrease in tissue mass due to decrease in size and or number of cells. Um, that is apoptosis here. So the decrease in size is basically, it has two elements. First is the increase in cytoskeleton degradation uh, via the ubiquitin protease pathway and autophagy, that's the first element and the second element um, that is decrease in protein synthesis so both of these elements one is the cytoskeleton degradation if you have within proteasome pathway and autophagy and the second element is decrease in protein synthesis they both um, contribute to the um, decrease in size of the cells so uh, the causes of the atrophy include uh, disuse, like not using that cells or that part of the body, um, denervation, no uh, nerve supply to it, uh, loss of a blood supply, and also loss of hormonal stimulation if the hormones don't get there uh, with poor nutrition. So we also have here um, teplasia, and that is reprogramming of stem cells. So the important thing is reprogramming of what of stem cells okay so uh it's just re uh doing the cell again 
So uh, that means replacement of one cell type by another cell type that can the new one like the new cell type can adapt to a new stress because the older one just cannot adapt with the older um, stress. Um, usually due to exposure to inheritance, it's not natural. I mean, it's just it's an exposure. Usually, it's an exposure to inheritance, such as gastric acid, for example, that is leading to Barrett's esophagus. That's a form of metaplasia. Or we have tobacco smoke that leads to normal respiratory ciliated columnar epithelium replaced by the new tissue, and that is citratified cytochrome epithelium. So may progress. This metaplasia may progress to dysplasia, and that is considered a malignant transformation. It's a malignant transformation with persistence insults. It happens. Uh, this dysplasia happens with various persistent insults. For example, Barrett's vagus may lead to the malignant transformation of esophageal adenocarcinoma, esophageal adenocarcinoma. Metaplasia of connective tissue can also occur if if um there if we have connective tissues they also may undergo metaplasia and for example there is myositis esophagus uh esophagus and that is the formation of bone within muscle after trauma so if you have a trauma to a muscle there may be some bone development within and that is called myositis esophagus and that is considered uh, metaplasia of the connective tissue so because uh, muscle is a connective tissue so um, there's we need to remember that the uh, metaplasia is reversible uh, if we stop the stressor for any reason or if we start the treatment for example omprazole uh, in in gastro gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, but if we don't stop the stressor, it may lead to cancer. Uh, but there's an exception to that, and it's, for example, apocrine metaplasia, such as seen in breasts, does not increase the risk of a breast cancer. So, for example, if we have um, apocrine metaplasia, and that is something to be seen in the breast, but it does not increase the uh, breast, the risk of a breast cancer. Um, so that's an exception to um, the metaplasia developing into uh, dysplasia. So now we have dysplasia. Dysplasia is disordered precancerous epithelial cell growth. So it's disordered precancerous and epithelial cell growth. Not considered a true adaptive response. So it, because it's bad, it's not considered a true adaptive response no uh, characterized by what by loss of uniformity of cell size and shape and that is pleomorphism so it means uh, the pleomorphism means it's the the cells lose their um, uniformity of cell size and cell shape both and also there is loss of tissue orientation and with nuclear changes, for example, increase in nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and the clumped chromatin. So um, there may be nuclear changes like increase in nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and the clumped chromatin. Uh, mild and moderate dysplasias, we have multiple degrees of dysplasias. There is mild and there's moderate dysplasias. They, which means, mild and moderate means do not involve the entire thickness of epithelium. It doesn't go all the way through the epithelium. Uh, may regress with alleviation of inciting, inciting cause. And this mild to moderate dysplasia may regress, may go down with the um, alleviation or relief of the inciting cause. So, but, but we have also severe dysplasia. So this severe dys dysplasia often becomes irreversible. Some, most likely it be will become irreversible and it progresses to carcinoma in situ. So um, it may progress to carcinoma in situ. Usually preceded by persistent metaplasia or pathologic hyperplasia. So usually 
um, this uh, transformation of progression to carcinoma in situ uh, in case of severe dysplasia is preceded by persistent metaplasia that is not going back to its nature or uh, there is a pathologic hyperplasia. So um, what we have here is uh, that dysplasia itself is reversible but if the stressor if the stressor is not dealt with and it progresses the cancer that is reversible um, that is not reversible i mean so basically dysplasia itself if it's just dysplasia for example mild or moderate it can go back to its normal status and it's fine but if it progresses to for example carcinoma then it is irreversible um, now we have this um, diagram and uh, we start with the normal set over here um, we are going with the reversible changes first there is change in the cell size and or number so if it's in the number then it's hyperplasia if it's in the size then it's hypertrophy if it's a reduction in the number or in the size then it's atrophy so if it atrophies and it does not have the ability to adapt to the stressors anymore it will lead to an irreversible causes uh, irreversible injury for example necrosis or apoptosis um, well also we have if a normal cell undergoes a severe stress or injury then it doesn't have to go through any of these it just can normally immediately go into uh, irreversible injury like necrosis or apoptosis. Um, that is for the reversible. We also, um, the different part here is that if it's change in the cell type, uh, if we have a change in the cell type, then this is metaplasia, considered metaplasia, and it's reversible, it can go back to its normal status. And we have dysplasia, and that is change in the cell structure as you can see here so change the cell structure it's also actually reversible okay but uh, both of these if the chronic like dysplasia and dysplasia if the chronic erythema persists it will become irreversible as in here and then this irreversible changes will lead to neoplasia and that is um, carcinoma formation so um if we have a change in cell type and the structure, as in uh, if we said that cell type is metaplasia and change in structure, then it's dysplasia. So if we have these changes, that's generally usually irreversible, okay? Irreversible, leading to neoplasia, okay? So, okay, so um, if we are talking about atrophy, there is a note that we have it's uh if the atrophy is due to decreased workloads first there is a decrease in cell size if it's due to decrease workloads then it's due to decrease in cell size and then a cell number so first it's a decrease in the cell size and then it's after that it's the decrease in the number uh there's also bone resorption also it increases it, so it's resulting in conditions described as osteoporosis of disuse osteoporosis of um, disuse also we mentioned the cigarette smoking tobacco cigarette smoking so there's a good note about it is that after sequimus metaplasia uh, it produces keratin pearl so um, one of the steps is producing uh, keratin uh, pearls so uh, also we have um a and for metaplasia it says that uh sequimus metaplasia in the bronchi uh that is if if we have sequimus metaplasia in the bronchi it means a replacement of goblet cells by stratified epithelium so that is uh, basically leading to loss of mucociliary mechanisms uh, which of course increases the susceptibility for respiratory infection and there's also another info and that is columnar uh, to sequimus metaplasia if it's changing from columnar to sequimus as in bronchi uh, it is much more common 
than sequamous intercalamina. So if it's calamina into sequamous, it's more common than sequamous into uh, calamina. Uh, calaminar metaplasia, for example, calaminar metaplasia, and that is uh, Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus. For the dysplasia, it says that um, production of keratin pearls by skin tumor cells is an example of dysplasia, that, and that is the surgery growth. So if we have some keratin pearls uh, produced by the skin tumors, uh, is an example, that is an example of dysplasia, and it is uh, considered a disordered growth. So, um, so we have also uh, another info about the neoplastic cells, the neoplastic cells, um, as in here, um, it's, it's that they lack completely the differentiation uh, activity, so they cannot differentiate at all. These anaplastic tumors uh, demonstrate four five stuff actually. First one is loss of cell polarity with complete disruption of normal cell architecture. So one, loss of cell polarity and complete disruption of normal cell architecture. While two is significant cellular and nuclear pleomorphism. Significant cellular and nuclear pleomorphism. A while three is disproportionately large hyperchromatic nuclei with abundant nucleoli. So um, the third thing is disproportionately large hyperchromatic nuclei with abundant nucleoli. Uh, four is numerous mitotic figures. Five is giant multinucleated tumor cells. For four, it's numerous mitotic figures, and five, it's giant multinucleated tumor 